classic that one is. It is a two after 11 o'clock and 27 degrees. My goodness, we've gone over our high, which was 24 by some amount. Anyway, it is Monday, April the 3rd here in New Zealand. And of course, uh, it's still Sunday evening over in Toronto, Canada. And I'm joined by Jay Sane. Good, uh, good morning from us. Good evening, sir. How are you? Good evening, I'm fantastic. Thank you for asking. How about yourself? Oh, look, I am absolutely excited to have you uh, on the show this morning. And uh, I think the best thing to do is to start off, we're going to do a little stinger. Uh, oh, are we? Here we go. Uh, we're going to do a little stinger. Should we do the stinger for the magazine now or should we do it later? Later. Later? You want to do it later. Okay, let's get the interview underway. <laughs> I've been... Waiting very, very patiently to meet you, Jay. It's an absolute pleasure because we get a lot of people. He's uh, got to say something first, all right? Okay. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we got the tech out running in and out going, can't hear. It was basically I had a button unpushed and you haven't spoken since. So, <laughs> uh, panicking. Never mind. Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, Jay, since we started playing your music, uh, the uh, listeners that we have here have been absolutely just inundating us and wanting more of your music and wanting to know more about you. So uh, let's start off, uh, first of all, with your band, Tim Shaw. He's your vocalist. Now, how did you meet Tim Shaw? Uh, Tim and I met probably about six or seven years ago now. Um, I was on the Toronto band scene uh, pretty much my entire life, just kind of grinding away as a musician, and I had had a demo kind of fall under my lap from, uh, you know, I was with another rhythm guitar player that I was playing with at the time. And I had a demo kind of come across my lap um, that had Tim's voice on it from his previous record. And I remember looking at my guy at the time, and I was like, you know, this is really good. This is kind of like, this is exactly what I kind of see as a vocalist, you know, doing in a band type thing. And uh, we reached out to him, and at the time, the band that he was in that cut that record just kind of split up. And he was still recording, writing with the drummer. Mm -hmm. um, at that point, we all had kind of just started to get in the same room together and write music, and that's kind of where Tim and I's relationship started, and it always kind of revolved around music and writing great songs, and just, we work so well together, we're, uh, we're very the same, but very different, and we kind of push and pull each other, so it's, it's a great kind of working relationship, and he's, he's, he's like the best kind of, most professional kick-ass singer I've ever been around, so. You know, that makes for a creative mix, and I get that from you, uh, and, and uh, uh, it's great to have somebody like Tim there on board. Now, tell me about Philly D. Now, he plays your bass. Oh, yeah. He, uh, Philly D is the bass lap one. <laughs> Philly, um, Philly actually came into the band just after we recorded Take It Slow. At that point, um, we were a four-piece. We started as a four-piece. Tim was playing rhythm guitar. Um, Eddie, was, Eddie was ended up being the rhythm guitar player. He was playing bass at the time. And... Um, you know, after we recorded Take It Slow, we kind of sat in a room and said, you know, Tim should move towards, like, a front man because, you know, it's there. And uh, we should find a permanent bass player and get Eddie on rhythm guitar at the time. And that's kind of where Finley came in. He was a session musician. He was involved with a few bands like Hill the Villain, a few other good Canadian bands uh, from Oshawa and that area and stuff like that. He knew a bunch of those musicians. So he had a, he had a strong background in, like, session musician work and uh, really knowing how to, you know, fill voids and kind of come in and work texturally with other people that were really, really kind of already versed in what they were doing, and it just added to the sound. It was awesome. And uh, Philly was a perfect addition of kind of the brotherhood, and, you know, that's how we live. We're very close. We're like a family. We're like a tight-knit unit. So I, it fitted in perfectly. I, I fully understand that. I really do. And uh, you're going to be a part of the Galaxy family now that you're doing the interview as well. But Eddie isn't with you anymore. He used to be... He's a Kiwi, I, I take it. He was, yeah. He, uh, he was from New Zealand. Um, he actually, uh, he moved back there, and, um, you know, we had just kind of moved on as a four-piece, and the chemistry was already there, so... Okay, so then comes Brandon Smiley. What a great name that is. He's your drummer. Now, how did you meet Brandon? Uh, Brandon, at the time, we were in between drummers, and we were playing a festival in, um, I think it was like Burlington or something like that, and uh, we were actually, we were opening the same gig as Slash, and... Um, we were there, and when we got to the gig, uh, Brandon had just kind of like auditioned for the band that he showed up to the show, and I remember kind of thinking that was cool. I met him through an ex-girlfriend at the time, and um, we kind of just became friends, and when that gap was there, he just jumped in, and he was the right guy for the job. Again, the family thing, 
super important to us. And I mean, like the way the four of us kind of just get along within each other, it's really kind of special. And that's where we kind of have that chemistry together, right? I understand it, and it's nice to see that you're uh, continuously playing with your guitar. Uh, <laughs> you can always tell a consummate professional that picks up a guitar, absolutely. Um, now, I'm going to talk to us, uh, talk to you about Lettuce to Water, but first of all, uh, a question from uh, some of our listeners is, uh, basically, who were your influences, what did you grow up with, what did you learn uh, from these people to make a uh, fall on ears as it stands right now? How did you come to make that band? What influenced you there to do it? It's a fantastic question. Um, there's a lot. I'll try to keep it short and sweet. Um, I was really influenced by hard rock and metal early. Um, I grew up really, really close to like Black Sabbath. Uh, I got really, really into Guns N' Roses a little bit later. Um, the guitar heroes were always big with me. Um, I kind of always looked at my playing, and what I did was I tried to take a little bit of everything. I love guys like Don McDarrell. Randy Rhodes, Slash, obviously, um, and, you know, even the, some of the newer guys, like Sin Gates and, and Zach Vengeance there from Avenged Sevenfold, Zach Wild, all those guys, like, try to just take key elements of those playing parts that influenced you, but take them in a direction where it's still kind of organic and, and means something to you, and it's still your expression, but just kind of sugar-coated and combed through with everything you've learned from that repertoire, and, um, I mean, like, Appetite for Destruction was a huge record for me. Volume 4 from Sabbath was a huge record for me. Um, I really got into Alice in Chains in the Seattle scene, uh, you know, in my high school years, kind of, uh, you know, lots of weed smoking and shit like that. And um, <laughs> there's, there's so much stuff, you know, I, I like a lot of, like, um, I like, um, like, a lot, so much, like, mellow or stuff, you know. I like, like, the Stones, I like the Beatles. Um, it's so vast, there's so much shit that I listen to that it's kind of just like this vacuum, it's just things like suck in at different points and it kind of drags me in all different directions and areas and it's really cool because um, when you're in the recording process, when you're recording something, you know, the stuff that you're listening to at the time really kind of ends up pouring into whatever you're doing, whether you're kind of aware of it or not. So I've had that happen with different things, like just the water, you can kind of hear what I was listening to at the time. I, I think that's kind of cool listening back. I, I kind of see that in your music, I really do. And uh, one there I kind of picked up on uh, was, of course, Black Sabbath. But I, I kind of feel there's a little bit of uh, Ted Nugent in there as well, just a touch, if you know what I mean. The aggressive, absolutely. Yes. It's kind of like a wild, uh, untamed. Yes, and, and absolutely get that. Um, oh, I'm rather interested in what you're smoking right there. <laughs> It's just the rolling, is it, or is it a, um, yeah. <laughs> well, we get, we get pretty good medicinal weed over here, man. Um, you guys. There's, like, weed shops you can walk into and buy shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, you're so lucky. Uh, uh, actually, uh, I've got to be honest with you. This morning in a poll here at Galaxy 107, we were asking, do you think it's time to legalise cannabis for medical purposes? We're that far behind you guys. You know, so... Uh, uh, we, yeah, absolutely. So I absolutely applaud you, sir, for uh, having one of those while having you put up with me. But I understand, looking at the space, you would need a little bit of medical uh, assistance to be able to have a look at me anyway. So uh, <laughs> you're doing fine. Now, I want to talk to you about Leaders to Water. Um, how did you come to the lyrics of Leaders to Water? And where did you record it? Who was the producer of it? Lead Us to Water was the first song that Paul and Ayers recorded in Toronto as a band. Um, we had recorded Tickets though in London, Ontario. Uh, it's a place called Charterhouse Studios, I believe, at the time. And it was with the same producer that we've been working with kind of through the entirety of the band. Um, he's kind of grown a lot with us. His name's Andre Doucette. He did um, a lot of uh, work with, you know, just, he worked with 30 Seconds to Mars a little bit. He's done a bunch of work with, like, a lot of guys. LA. Um, he actually teaches production stuff now. Just a very well-versed guy. We see very eye-to-eye on, on recording quality and, um, you know, kind of getting the best quality where it meets the point where you still get the point of the song that's being written across. And, um, you know, we're always kind of like very meticulous into the way we put songs together and the recordings that we get. Uh, the different tones are very important to us. We pull our hair out trying to, you know, get that perfect. It's like a it's almost like just kind of seeing the vision all the way through and by the end of it you kind of try to paint that picture the way you saw it kind of without color before. Uh, and uh, I end up 
relating to a lot of the lead stuff to color and stuff. That's just the way I play. It's it's cool. It's like an emotional thing. You know, I, I really, um, uh, I really see that in, in the song itself. So let's play it now for our listeners. Here it is. Lead us to water. Here's Paul and Ears. You're joining DJ Grant and Jay right here at Galaxy 107 FM. Yeah, it's gonna go through the ads. I love this track. This is an awesome track, my bro. Absolutely love it. Here we go. <laughs> I appreciate that, man. We uh, we actually stopped thinking for half the year. So what I'm going to talk about next is the hideout closing party. <clears throat> now, w w was that a venue that you played in, the hideout? Fun. Yep, and, and I'm also... So uh, the, the hideout was... What? Yep, uh, I'm also using the hideout as a venue for a show that I'm doing with Tattoo Rock Power. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, I want to know the story. Oh. You know, old man, some of the clubs we played out here, it's kind of like the family. Like, like, I know it was like our place on the strip, in the street, the highlight was like our bar, man. It was like our drinking bowl. So we got to kind of close it out, and that was really special. So. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, I also want to talk about the um, uh, self-titled Black EP that, you, that you've done and, and where you recorded yeah. it. Who produced it for you, um, and how you put the uh, tracks together to be able to put on that EP? Because um, uh, we have a lot of listeners that want to know about the EP itself and how they can uh, uh, get hold of it, which will work us into then uh, websites and stuff like that. He's frozen up. You still there? You still there, Jay? Oh, yeah, still there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll go back to the desk. Right here at Galaxy 107 FM, I'm joined by Jay Sane out of uh, Fallen Ears. And believe me, what a great song that is, Lead Us to Water. Uh, and one of our uh, more requested songs, but we got the biggest one coming up yet. Uh, now, Jay, I, I want to talk to you uh, uh, about the, the self titled Black EP that you put out in 2013. How did you come to uh, put that together? How many songs on it? And uh, we're going to segue then into, uh, of course, your... Uh, 
uh, websites, how our, our listeners can get hold of you, and uh, do you have merchandise to sell, all that sort of stuff, how do they download your music? So uh, let's start with the uh, self-titled uh, Black EP. How did you put it together? Are you there, Jay? Right. Oh. So the self Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, mate. Yep. We all good? So the, the self-titled Black EP, the way it came together was kind of at the end of um, a transition for the band. We had just lost the drummer, and we had just put out um, our last single all in that little put-together piece, which was Wake Up. And um, what ended up happening was we had four singles that we recorded. Um, they were all kind of kick-ass. They all made sense to what we were trying to do. Um, one of them was recorded by a different producer, which was Wake Up, and that ended up being on uh, Don Cherry's Rock'em Sock'em. Um, that was a whole different story. But Wake Up was the reason we kind of put that EP together, because we needed something to market and put together. And we felt that those four songs over the three or four years that we were together, we put out a single kind of a year. And um, it was really special because the way it came together wasn't planned to be an EP at all. It just kind of got compiled together that way. And the flow still sounded organic. Three of the four songs were by the same producer. And um, the other one was by a producer that we're actually still pretty good friends with. And uh, I think it still makes sense in the catalog. And it kind of just, it was just a different time for the band and a different sound. And the way it came across was fucking cool at the end of it. I was really proud of it. Very, very cool. Now, uh, I, I got to ask you... Uh... About the next song that we're going to look at, um, the hideout closing party. Now, uh, <laughs> uh, that uh, I take it was a, a bit of a hangout for you guys, and you did the very last show there. Uh, tell me about that. It was a hangover and a half, but I mean that was like the hideout relationship that I had my entirety of being there. The hideout was my favorite part on Queen West, which is our little like you know fucking Toronto Hollywood strip down here. It's where all the live music venues are in Toronto. Um, it's where all the, you know, born and bred kind of Toronto musicians, hard rock musicians that I knew grew up. And the hideout for the last kind of 10 years was an integral part of that scene and that strip. All the artwork on the walls and everything you can see in the video that we released. Um, it was just so special and it was such a characterized rock and roll bar. It was so uh, genuine and so fucking so cool. That um, it, when it closed, it was really shitty because the music scene just, you know, they actually today just... Go check out the Hideout Toronto. They just um, they just got a new location that they're opening in like a week and a half or whatever. So it's closer to my house too. So <laughs> yeah, absolutely <laughs> brilliant. Uh, now, also, uh, can you tell me about the uh, tattoo uh, tattoo rock parlor? Very interested yeah, in that. There's some cool venues on the strip. Tattoo rock parlor is actually not really like it's still there. But uh, they're not really having rock shows anymore. But at the time that we were kind of on the, the scene, you know, bands like, again, Hell of the Villain, like, there were so many cool shows that were happening at Tattoo. Uh, we saw Monster Truck at Tattoo. There were a bunch of cool shows that went down there. And, um, you know, I, I had known a bunch of the owners and management there and stuff. And um, we ended up just kind of growing relationships with everyone in that place. And, you know, whenever we had, like, a show that we had to put on in Toronto over that period of two, three years, whatever was going on, we made sure that the tattoo was the location because, you know, you could fit a good seven, eight hundred people in there and you could just smash it. The video footage you could get and the, you know, the party afterwards, it was just, it was always a good time and the hideout was right next door so you could always hit, like, you know, 4 a.m. last call, whatever it was at the time. <laughs> okay, now, uh, the, the one that really has taken my interest, and believe me, I'm going to love to say this, the Bovine Sex Club, now, there's got to be a story there, tell me all about that. Yeah, so again, about three feet down from where Tattoo and Idaho are, um, not literally, you know, we're talking like a few storefronts, but there's another club that's integral again to the Toronto rock scene, it's called the Bovine Sex Club, yeah, I'm glad that you picked that up. Um, it's one of our favorite venues in Toronto. Um, I actually met Baz there. I met Sebastian Bach there. I've met countless fucking dudes there. Like, everybody kind of gets like the, it's like the shitty rock and roll bar that you go to before 2 a.m. last call, you know? And I've played so many shows there and drank so many nights there. And it's just, you know, the relationship that we end up having with these bars and stuff, it's like, uh, it's always good to have those Toronto roots and to just keep true to what you do because it's such a cool fucking scene down here and it gets neglected and, you know, venues end up closing and nobody gives a fuck about what goes on anymore, but we're still here putting these shows on and they're still fucking, you know, go watch the videos, it looks great. 
Absolutely. And, and you know something, uh, I'm kind of wanting to hop on a plane and come over and have a beer with you right now. Uh, and for you to show me around uh, Toronto, because believe me, uh, you're the kind of guy that I really like to party with. And uh, I might bring a couple of my guys as well. Uh, I've got a band called Craving Strange. And uh, believe me, I've got a band out of New York called Craving Strange. You guys are just going to get it off so much, it's not going to be funny. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of fun. So right now, let's play the hideout closing party. You're right here at Galaxy 107 FM. Here's Paul and Ears. <laughs> Me too. Absolutely. It's yeah, a good track. It, it is, is a good track, my friend. It really is. Uh, I may look old, but believe me, up here I'm still 21, bro. <laughs> I just like good music. I really do. I guess you found it. Yeah, and, and all credit to Barbara. <laughs> believe me, uh, she was the one that came to me and says, "Hey, Grant, you got to check these guys out." And uh, immediately we went to the production and says, download this music, I want to play it. So <laughs> you're, you're in our system. Right, man. I mean, honestly, like, I really, that's how you, you kind of build relationship in this business too. I really appreciate you like that. So, exactly. You know, thank you. My pleasure, bro. Um, I'm looking forward to actually seeing this in the magazine, especially uh, Indie Garage. You're going to be featured in that pretty heavily as well. So uh, it's going to be nice to be able to see you guys in the magazine because, believe me, there's a lot of people reading that magazine and, and picking up on the things that uh, are having a look at. Uh, and it's now becoming quite a large following. It really is. So uh, the more people that uh, we can get to read the magazine, the more they have a look at your, uh, your music, your websites. Go and buy your merch, if you know what I mean. Speaking of which, Amazing. speaking of which, um, I'm sure Barbara's going to hit you up at some stage to see if you've got a few T-shirts and CDs to give away that we could give away here in a competition. <laughs> We're going to do a restock in the next month or so, and we'll send some shit out to you guys, 100%. Brilliant, what about brilliant. Uh, oh, and uh, she says, what about stingers? How would you like to be able to uh, do us a couple of uh, stingers? Say, basically, just saying, you know, this is uh, Jason from Fallen Ears. Galaxy Rocks or something like that, yeah, and we'll, sure. we'll we'll throw it on the. Uh, hey, no problem. I'm down with that. 100. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, lovely girlfriend in the background, is it? The wife. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Hi. Uh oh, this is my wife, uh, Terry. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. And you? Very nice. Like your music, that's choice. Anyway, awesome. Okay, over. off. Galaxy 107 FM, and believe me, we are joined uh, by uh, lead guitarist Jay Sane uh, from Falling Airs, and believe me, what a great guy this guy is. He's telling us about <laughs> all of the fun that they're going to have, uh, and I think we're going to be uh, heading over there to uh, party with them at some stage. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, I want to talk about Crank It Up magazine. We're going to be putting uh, Jay and the band Falling Airs into the magazine, especially into Indie Garage. And uh, you'll be able to follow 
everything there and get all the uh, all the appropriate websites and everything like that. Also, in the bands and singers, you'll be able to go in there, read about them, and, and hit on the videos, have a look at that. Uh, believe me, it's going to be great to have a Jay and his band Paul and Ears in there. And you can always tell a consummate professional guitarist, he's always playing with the strings. <laughs> He's always picking it up and playing with it, having a ball. Uh, now, Jay, I want to talk to you. Uh, I, I read here that you were almost the band that never was. Now, tell me about that. How did that happen? And uh, how did you now form the band to be able to become the band that almost never was? I guess at the time, um, there was just a lot of transition going on with all of the members that were happening. Uh, Tim... Uh, Eddie, a bunch of the people who founded the band were uh, 27 at the time or whatever it was, 26, 27, they're on the same age, and I was much younger, I was like 18, when we recorded this, the Take It Slow Soul and all that shit, I was 18, um, I was, you know, they had like 8, 9 years on me, so um, the band's kind of grown and, you know, lost a bunch of members since then, but I mean, like, you know, in that time that you're together, you kind of solidify the people who need to be there, and you find the real lineup, and you put the you know, the core members together and you kind of come out as a package and that's kind of what we like to do. Very, uh, very understandable. I, I, I get where you're going to now. Uh, now, you also made Indie Week a CMW and NXNE. Uh, tell me about that. So, North by Northeast uh, is like the, the Canadian counterpart to South by Southwest in Texas and the States. Um, and uh, CMW's Canadian Music Week, Indie Week, those are like uh, some really, really cool music festivals that happen across Canada that end up taking part in Toronto. We're very blessed to have these here, and uh, we always, you know, get really cool showcases, and we meet really cool artists from all over the world, and we get on some really cool bills and stuff like that. And the relationships that you form with those festivals, I've always found being from here and like being from the, you know, the streets of Toronto and all that shit, the best relationships I've formed with some of the people who are just passing through the towns. Not to say that people here are bad or anything, but it's just that connection that brings people to Toronto for those festivals has always been special. And I, I'm really happy that I got to take a part in being from Toronto and having those take part here. Very cool. Now, um, are you looking at recording at the moment? I know you're coming into summertime. Uh, w wouldn't it be more the uh, time for tailing off with the recording and then starting to plan uh, the tours for the summer? Uh, what have you got in plan there? So, there's a bunch of stuff going on. Um, in Toronto over here, um, we're opening for a pretty big Canadian band's 20th reunion kind of thing called Age of Electric. Uh, that's happening at the Mod Club, April 13th. Um, beyond that, we're, we're in pre pro right now. We have about five, six new songs that we've kind of cut down. I'll say there's a few acoustic, there's a few harder ones. And um, we're going to record one or two for, for, you know, kind of release this year, I think is kind of what we're aiming towards. And um, we're going through pre pro to kind of nail down what we want to, you know, see the band kind of, what phase is kind of next and what sounds the best and everything. We're just really paying, you know, a true kind of heart to the music this time around more and more and more as we play together because we love it so much. And, just begin to lock in and stuff. So summer is going to be a bunch of outdoor stuff. You know, we get those like Canadian festivals around. We're going to probably do another circuit for Ontario. So like you know, Oshawa, uh, Hamilton, you know, Peterborough, all that stuff in Ontario. That's always fun. And um, we'll probably have another few Toronto shows coming up this year. And um, we're looking to put together another video for the for release of the next year for sure. Absolutely brilliant. Now I hope we're, when you're bringing out your new, uh, your new stuff that you don't forget about us down here, down under. We would love to be able to uh, work with you, premiere your music. Believe me, there's a lot of people here in New Zealand and Australasia that follow your music. Uh, but not only that, uh, we are a global station. We go around the world and, and we get so many people from around the world that take an interest in your music. And uh, so we, when you do bring out the new stuff, please don't forget about us. <laughs> we one of the first now, buddy. <laughs> oh, absolutely. We're more than friends, to be honest with you, bro. You're part of the Galaxy family now. I've got to be honest with you. So we'll, we'll call each other brother instead. How's that? That's good, brother. Awesome, awesome. Now, at the same time, uh, with having you uh, in the magazine, uh, the uh, owner of the magazine was talking to me uh, not so long ago. He says, listen, Grant, with all of these great bands that we've got now, I'm starting to consider... Uh, bringing some down under uh, and doing a tour, doing a crank it up tour uh, here in New Zealand and in Australia, uh, we may be able to get you involved. Would you be interested in coming to uh, good old uh, Aotearoa? 
Hey, you know what, man? It's um, it's a place I've always wanted to see. We'd have to figure out some, uh, you know, some expense sheets on our side, probably. But it's definitely, I never say no to an opportunity that's good, man. Like, we, we love playing. We love what we do. And if there's people, you know, hey, man, we'll put together a crowdfunding thing. And I'll bring everyone's ass over there if I have to. I don't give a shit. It'll work, man. We'll figure it out. <laughs> Absolutely. We would love to have you, to be very honest with you. Show you a little bit of New Zealand. Uh, take you through and show you some of the cultures that we have here. Even some of the crazy wild foods that we eat, and believe me, there was some weird stuff. There really is. Uh, hoo-hoo grubs, for instance, uh, they're, they're like a big caterpillar. You just don't eat the head. <laughs> nice and juicy. Apparently tastes like uh, peanut butter, but I haven't given it a go. We can even throw you off a bridge. Oh, I'm fucking... I'm, I'm ready. Right <laughs> a little bit of bungee jumping, something like that. So we would love to be able to have you here in New Zealand. Playing in front of New Zealand audiences. Also, uh, we may, if, if we feel generous, we may share you with Australia. How's that? <laughs> Sounds fantastic, man. Any opportunity to get music out there to people who want to hear it, like we're, we're 100% in, 100%. Awesome. awesome. I, I have a number of bands that uh, you guys would uh, fit in with very, very well. In fact, uh, I, I was thinking about Voices of Extreme, uh, formerly known as Anthrax, if you remember them from back in the day. Yeah. Yep. Uh, now they're Voices of Extreme and just absolutely killing it. They really are. Uh, another band, Craving Strange as well. And also Darkstone. Coming from uh, Canada themselves, uh, Darkstone, great uh, group of guys, those ones. And you know something? I, I think we'd have the police on full alert all the time here in New Zealand. That sounds great. That's a bit of me. Uh, I, I like that. Anyway, I want to talk about uh, Take It Slow. Tell me how you come to writing the lyrics of that. So Take It Slow was the first song that Paul and Ernest as a band ever wrote together. Um, it was a concept that Tim and I, uh, well, everybody in the room kind of, you know, we dabbed in it a little bit. And um, we just had this really cool groove, this kind of like, uh, it was very Alice in Chains inspired. Alice in Chains just put a record out that a lot of us really dug. And it was that, wah, wah, wah. it was very sluggish, but still kind of aggressive. And um, the lead was just filthy, and we got these tones and these squeals and these fuck. It was really cool. Uh, I was 18 at the time when we wrote, you know, I was, when we recorded and wrote that. And uh, listening to it now, like I, I actually think it's some of the better stuff I've I've been able to do compared to some of the shit I do now. So <laughs> it's it's subjective because it's my own stuff, right? But I I have a great smile on my face when I listen to it. So the recording quality on it's awesome too. So. We really, uh, we had our, our head in a good place. It was the, you can hear it's the beginning of the start of like where the band was, and you know the writing obviously just you know morphs as you grow together. But take it slow is a good one to look back on. It was really a fun time. And it kind of got a good message across. Well, you know, against. I had a look at your bio, and it said there that when when you first uh, formed the band, uh, within the first two hours you had already written a couple of songs. Yeah, it was the it was the, the coolest first jam. It was uh, Eddie, the Kiwi there, was my best friend for a lot of years. And Tim and his best friend was the drummer in the band. We told you about the ride. Jeff and those four people got into a room. And, I mean, we were on top of the drum kit. We, we were together for, like, four or five hours. And it was one of the most magical jams I think any of us have ever been a part of. It was fantastic. We had such a good time. It was so organic. And um, it was, you know, like, I, I think at the time, like, we were all kind of like, whoa, that was a little crazy, right? But it ended up kind of coming around and we all... Um, realized that was the best thing at the time to do, and we just dug into it. And, you know, all these years down the line, even it's it's, it's not been too long, but when we look at it, um, it the growth has been the, the coolest part for me. Like watching Tim grow, and like watching my best friends, my family kind of grow through this with us and everything. It's just it's very magical. It's a special feeling, and being able to touch people in a way where your music matters to them is really important. You know, that is very very cool. I understand exactly where you're coming from. So right now we're going to play Take It Slow. Here is Paul and Ears. Love this guitar work. We haven't, we haven't played Take It Slow live in about a year. We're going to play it at the next, next show. I'm going to get some live footage and send it to you guys. Please do. And dedicate it to us. It's <laughs> filthy, man. It's fucking filthy. It, it is, is awesome. It really is. I never, I never listen to this shit, so it's fun. Bro. <laughs> Mate, I'm a big fan. As soon as I heard your music, I had to know. I just had to know yeah. you guys, you know? So, 
Yeah, this is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Please play it more often. <laughs> Please. Have fun with it. Um, now, I'm going to ask you about where, when you're doing live shows and stuff, uh, do you get butterflies? Do you get, get that pre nerves before you get on stage? Um, how long have you been playing as an artist? Where, where, have you been doing it since you were a young child? You know, you're saying that you started about 18, and I've, I've heard from so far. But it sounds like you've been in the music for a lot longer than that. And you sound like you're an old hat, you know. Yep, let's go back, what, five, six years. <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh, I'm going to ask you about that. Your upbringing in music, what, what did your parents think of you uh, uh, wanting to be an artist? You know what I mean? Um, and uh, what, what was their background? Did they have any background in music and stuff like that? You know what I mean? And, and also, let's give a shout out to your lovely missus as well. What do you think? Yeah, <laughs> brilliant. Microphones, turn the mics on. I'm getting so excited, I'm losing myself. <laughs> uh, we're joined here, of course, there was uh, Fallen Ears, take it slow. We're joined by Jay, the lead guitarist from the band. And uh, Jay, it has been a pleasure talking to you this morning. Tell me a little bit about your musical history. How old were you when you first got into the music industry? Uh, you know, how long, uh, how old were you when you first decided, you know, I want to be a guitarist, I want to be a singer, I want to get involved in. Uh, music and, and this is the style I want to go with and uh, does that influence come from your parents? Uh, did your parents have uh, much involvement in, in your career? Absolutely. So um, I actually from a young age I always loved, like I just told you I loved music from the time I was about four or five years old. Um, I was big into like Ozzy, big into like you know fucking all, all, everything, just everything. Zeppelin, uh, everything. And I can probably say music-wise, um, I always I was had influence kind of in my head with drums. I had this like cool thing where I love drums, and my parents were like, "There's no fucking way you're getting drums for us." I kind of um, I remember around the time I was just twelve over thirteen, my my dad had a huge kind of uh, integral part in me becoming a guitar player and me being into the shit that I do, especially because he showed me all those albums and it was his collection of shit that I always kind of was in. You know, from Alice Cooper to uh, fucking Super Tramp to uh, like all over the board, right? And, and, and uh, um, really kind of get to have that background that goes to so many different places and, and still kind of, kind of has a talk about rocket route, which when I was about 13, um, I remember my dad had an old bass guitar that was around. I do everything I do left handed, but the fucking bass was right, it was a regular, you know, right handed bass. So that's how I started kind of fucking with the thing and playing with it. And um, I got to the point where I was about 13, I think, and he handed me an appetite for destruction one, one night. And we always talked about music and shit. And I didn't know that because it was at the time. He gave me the album and he was like, uh, take this and listen to 169, it'll change your life type thing. And I don't know if nothing to do when he fucked up like that. And um, I listened to it, it was Welcome to Jungle Paradise City, Sweet Child of Mine, obviously, right? And uh, I mean, the whole record's fantastic. Those are the ones that stuck in. Fans and started to each other mind and kind of solidifying when I heard that solo in my head that I was like, you know, the fact that you can make a sound like that, that you can do something like that, it was so fucking, so cool and just so uh, electric and so, uh, so it spoke to me on a different level where I just decided, you know, this is, this is what I want to do. I don't want to play guitar, I want to play lead guitar and I want to fucking do it better. And I would just, 
I always have that kind of competitive thing inside of me where it's just, you know, like we love what we do so deeply. It's like there's nothing that I never want to learn. I never get to a point where I'm like, I'm cool, I'm done learning. I always keep taking stuff in and want to get better. And I mean, it's very integral into growing as an artist, I find. I, I get it. I, I really do. And I understand where you're coming from. Now, as a fan, how do we get in touch with you? Give us your websites. Do you have uh, links there that we can buy merchandise, stuff like that? How do we uh, get your music? Uh, and believe me, people, download the music and pay for it. Uh, don't be cheap and try and get it for nothing. How do we get hold of that? Um, well, I have a Twitter, Instagram, all that shit pretty uh, pretty regularly. Most of them are, you know, slash fallen airs or at fallen airs or hashtag fucking fallen airs. <laughs> it's pretty much just the band's name. Uh, www.fallenairs.com is our website. Go check it out. We have a shop there. Um, we actually released some, it's kind of like themed like the Black EP, their normal shirts that we put out when we first launched the band. And we have new shirts that we just put out as well, a little bit more expensive because we just put them out. And hey, we're all fucking broke over here. So um, support the band. And if you can, buy the music on iTunes, uh, Apple Store Music, go fucking Google everything. <laughs> Just make sure, uh, if you can't support the band, please do, because we work hard over here. Uh, not enough people come to shows for live music anymore. So if you can, get on there, buy some music. Uh, we're very passionate about what we do, and hopefully we'll come over there and show you very soon. Yep, we would love to have you over here and, 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 and entertaining our, our audiences here in New Zealand. Uh, I also, uh, give me a shout out, please, uh, for your lovely lady. It's in the background there. This is Nicole, sitting outside right now. <laughs> yeah, I saw her go past before and I thought, you know, uh, it would be rather remiss of us if we uh, didn't give her a shout out. So uh, nice to meet Nicole and, and have her a part of the oh, show. Hello. <laughs> uh, hello. 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 Uh, this is the one song that we get the most requests for here at Galaxy FM uh, for Fallen Earth. So, uh, how did you come to put this song together? Gravel Fly um, was put together by the band when we all kind of came together. We just lost the, the other guitar player in the band. We just lost the other guitar player in the band. And um, we got into kind of like this acoustic groove thing where we wrote, uh, I think, five or six really, really cool, really groovy acoustic songs that really kind of came from a, a really deep spot in the band's kind of us, uh, where we were at musically. And uh, Braveful Fly was the one that kind of came out on top, and we kind of just went with it. We recorded it. Uh, the same studio we shot the video at it with, I think, uh, Guana Studios, we recorded Lead Us to Water there, uh, Bag of Bleed It. Um, a, a lot of the different stuff that we've, we've, we've had on those rec recordings and stuff was recorded within those walls at Iguana Studios. Give Vic a shout out there at Iguana. Awesome dude, this team. Um, they've recorded countless fucking artists in Canada and the States. And, um, you know, I, I guess um, Brave Will Fly just came from a really deep spot. All of the parts were very cared for. I really, you know, the acoustic, the Spanish kind of guitar. Um, I, I'm really into like Jimmy Page and a lot of uh, acoustic music. I like the classical stuff. I like the dream theater. I like progressive stuff. Um, so my, I'm all over the map with that kind of stuff. And I kind of just saw this very touching acoustic tone that kind of spoke to me as a song. And it, it came out really, really, really well, I thought. And I never say that about my own shit. So um, we were really happy with the way Brave Fly came out. The vocal tape was just amazing. I sat there and watched him kind of magic. And um, it's just, it's really the band stripped down and just speaking to an audience about what we went through and, you know, growing us, growing on to that four piece again and just kind of coming out as the real band and being like, okay, this is us, take it or leave it, this is what we're here to do, this is what we can do. Kind of like the don't cry of, you know, of, of what we, that just softer speaking to your audience, showing we're capable of a whole other side of stuff, uh, you know, beyond the hard rock shit. It's really a cool kind of thing to do. You know, uh, I, I understand that now, uh, but believe me, the listeners have been absolutely hounding us uh, for the song and, and wanting to know all about it. So uh, now, listeners, you've got the information. Let's hear it. Brave will fly. Here's Paul and Ears. Oh, 
Are you comfortable there, my bro? Oh, fantastic. Thank you for asking. Nice, nice. So uh, what we'll do now is we'll do a wrap-up. Um, look, I really thank you so much for taking some time out talking to us about this because, believe me, uh, we're huge fans. We want to be able to continue this on and, and uh, do giveaways, stuff like that, so I'm sure Barbara will be in touch. Yeah, yeah. we'll figure it out. And um, we do want to be able to get you into the magazine. What we'll do is once we say goodbye here, we'll stop for a couple of seconds and then we'll do a quick promo. Uh, basically, it's like uh, they have a studio over there. I say, hello, John. Uh, with me today, I have Jay, uh, Jay with me uh, from Fallen Ears. Uh, we'll switch the camera to you. Just say, hi, I'm Jay, whatever. Crank it up magazine, how are you? <laughs> and uh, we'll cut it up there and uh, we'll put that on Facebook and everything as well. <laughs> um, sorry for interrupting you at... Seven o'clock at night, almost eight o'clock at night now. Uh, it, we really appreciate you taking the time out. Believe me, it's really no worries, awesome. Worries. And, and you know, laundry and shit on Sunday for us over here. We're just kind of. <laughs> 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 I got fucking fly clothes flying about my head. <laughs> don't, don't get your whites mixed up with your colours. <laughs> <laughs> I, I try not to get mine mixed up with my uh, with, with my wife's. <laughs> Trying to get Jack on the jeans too much. Yeah, know. exactly, exactly. You know, <laughs> the missus doesn't like scraping it off first. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, dear, dear. Um, yeah, that, that's about us. We've, we've gone through all the questions. That's <laughs> really, really cool. And, and you know, it's been an absolute pleasure meeting you, Jay. It really has. <laughs> and um, I'm going to take you up on that. I'm going to come over there and have a spliffy with you. Sounds good, anytime. Nice, nice. And you have to pop in every now and again to say hi. Yeah, anytime. I'm, I'm not, you know, this is a good time for me. Sunday night's usually a good time. I'm okay. going to figure this out. You know, it's not, go. Cool. It's and, and please pass the love on to the rest of the boys, to Tim. Uh, they're probably listening right now. All of them are talking to me, but they're really excited. They saw the pictures you sent us and everything. It was cool, man. Everyone's cool. Nice, nice. Oh, awesome. I, I will give you a reminder, too, by the way. Uh, please send in all of your stuff to Barbara so that we can get you in this magazine. Um, well, lots I'll of people, especially uh, managers and agents. Whatever and stuff you guys like need, just ask me. I can give you everything. No problem. Awesome. Awesome. I'll send it tomorrow. I think we'll all that stuff over here anyway as well. So. Yeah, okay. Barbara says she'll send it tomorrow. <laughs> awesome. Uh, love a prepared man. Yeah, love, I know. Love that. I told you so. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, let's go back to the desk. the most requested Paul and Ear song that we have at, the, at this moment. And of course we're joined by uh, Jay Shane, uh, lead guitarist from Paul and Ears. And, and I've got to thank you, uh, Jay, for taking the time out today to be able to talk to us uh, about the songs and, and the band itself. And, and please pass on the love to the rest of the band for us and, and let them know any time they feel like dropping in for a conversation, more than welcome, we'd love to be able to talk to you. And please... Passes on all that new stuff. We want to be able to keep this ball rolling uh, as much as possible. Uh, I'm also going to ask you, uh, uh, Barbara's going to remind me to remind you, please get your stuff in, please, for the Crank It Up magazine. That, that includes uh, 
or, or your bio and everything like that, <laughs> and so that we can make a, a very good story about you guys in the magazine. And, and I know there's a lot of people now taking a lot of interest in the bands that do go in there, uh, uh, which also makes you qualify, as I said earlier on, for a... Uh, uh, Polestar Award, uh, you may be in the running for that, and also uh, being able to get you down here, down under, because we really want to see you here, and uh, as, as I said to you before, we may share you with Australia, uh, We Kiwis have this love-hate relationship with New Zealand, Australia, much like you Canadians do with uh, America, you know what I mean, eh? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's healthy, right? Yeah, you Pick on your neighbour. Yeah, <laughs> um, we, we, our national sport here in New Zealand is actually rugby union, and uh, same so, same with the Australians. Uh, uh, but yours, I take it, is ice hockey over there. Oh yeah, we skate around. We like we fly around like penguins, but now, <laughs> which which is the team you follow? Come on, give me a shout out for your team. Uh, right now, I obviously my whole life, you know, I grew up in Toronto, so the Toronto Maple Leafs are on a tear right now. Um, we're doing a good job. We just got a bunch of young guys who just came through the feeder system. And uh, shout out to the Leafs, man. They're, uh, they're, they're creeping up the standings right now. They have about 10 games left or something like that. It's all good. <laughs> That's very, very cool. Uh, now, I also heard that uh, your, your national hero in ice hockey would have to be Wayne Gretzky. Uh, he, he's got himself his own team now. Oh, yeah. I got to meet the Wayne. He actually has a bar down here. It's called Wayne Gretzky's. Really? Uh, I, yeah, yeah, it's right, used, right next to where Jeff Healy used to have a bar. He was the line guitar player. Yeah, yeah, very yeah, familiar. Yeah, they had two bars right next to each other. It was Jeff Healy's and Wayne Gretzky's. And um, Wayne goes in there sometimes and shit like that. And now he's, you know, doing whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's even got his own wine now, I've heard. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and he's done... Uh, uh, he started to play golf as well, I've heard. Maybe he might be able to give Tiger a few uh, tips on how to play. Yeah, yeah, those two should get in the room together, that's for sure. <laughs> well, Tiger needs a mentor now, he really does. He's not playing too well, to be very honest with you. Uh, yeah, I, he's not really distracted again, it's okay. Yeah, but maybe there's more girls than golf these days. Uh, they're worse than, than, than fucking music guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got to watch the drummer, apparently. Apparently, you... Okay. You yeah. want to be on TV, man, fuck that shit. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Anyway, my friend, thank you very, very much for taking your time out to join us today. And we want to be able to uh, see you in the uh, pages of Crank It Up magazine. Uh, should we do a quick stinger for that? Yeah? yeah. Well, we'll have to say goodbye. Yeah. Well, but we're not doing it on air, though, are we? Well, we can do it. We, we might as well do it while we got the chance. What do you think? Okay. Okay? 